Ja. Because you suck at this. Watch Crackalag and Doxy Crew, my name is Toxa. Hey, what the hell do you think you're doing? Well, this is a collab, right? I should introduce myself, right? Not like that, you're not YouTube sensation Connordor. Like what? No 3D allowed. But Minecraft is made of cubes. Well, today they are made of squares. There's a dress code here and I expect you to abide by it. <sighs> okay, fine. Hit me, squid man. Thank you. As I was saying, what's crack a lack in Toxic Room? My name is Toxiquid, and let's just cut right to the chase. What if Minecraft Steve was in Smash? How would his moveset work? What spirits could he bring? What classic mode rap would he do? And would he be worth it? Here joining me is Rule Breaker Connordor, who will remain like this for the rest of the video because there is no 3D allowed. Jeez, alright. Hey guys, my name's Connordor, and I also make YouTube videos about video games. God, I can't feel my toes. Mm, enough of that. This video, we, again, will be developing a hypothetical DLC pack for Steve himself, containing stuff like a moveset, spirits, music, a stage, and the whole shebang. This is a fully developed DLC fighter, so without further ado, let's mine our way into the standard attacks. <laughs> Starting out, Minecraft has received a ton of updates throughout the years, so we wanted to pull influence from both the past and present of Minecraft, with some items being introduced in the later parts. Keep that in mind for later, but for right now, let's start with the jab combo. Connor, what would you say is the most iconic action in Minecraft? Crafting. Nope. Mining diamonds? Nuh uh. Punching trees? Bingo. The jab combo starts out with a standard right swipe, then a left punch, and then finishes with a swipe from his diamond sword. The dash attack uses the bucket, where Steve will throw water, lava, or just a bunch of freaking fish. The water would push the opponent and kinda act like Squirtle's water gun, the lava would burn the enemy and throw them in the air after getting hit, and would slowly deplete on the ground, and the fish would just both push the enemy and inflict damage on them. I think my favorite part about this attack is just, like, the idea of a cube man slapping a literal goddess with a pufferfish. The forward tilt is the signpost slash, where Steve swipes with a signpost. The up tilt is the carrot on a stick, acting very similar to Simon's. And lastly, the down tilt would be the shears, where they'd push the shears outward, where it could trip very easily. But enough with those boring attacks, let's now move to the smash attacks. The side smash is pretty simple. Steve starts to swipe his diamond pickaxe before striking someone. The up smash is the axe swing, where Steve swings the diamond axe in an upwards arc. And finally, the down smash would use a flint and steel and would ignite fire onto both sides of you. And the fire would kind of stay there for a little bit, acting kind of like Lucas's PK fire. And with that, that clears up all the standard attacks. So now let's move on to the aerial attacks. Despite the fact that Steve's jump has the expression of a cardboard box, his aerial moves aren't too shabby. Take it away, Mr. Door. Alright. For his neutral air, Steve spins his sword around in a circular motion, and the forward air has him shoot his bone arrow, kinda like what the villager does. The back air would be the shield bash, where he'd whip out the shield and strike, the up air would be the host slash, and then lastly the down air would be the anvil drop, where he drops an anvil as a projectile. We really didn't have to dig deep to explain these attacks, so now let's move on to the grabs and throws. For the grab, he pulls you in with the lead, and for the pummel, he punches you like a tree. The forward throw slams him with a door, the back throw pelts him with a snowball, the up throw places a piston precisely pushing people past you, and the down throw is a snooze fest with the bed. Radio. The special attacks are really where Steve starts to shine as we get to pull from all corners of Minecraft. The neutral special is the Splash Potion, where Steve throws a lingering potion of poison, generating a cloud that, if inside of it, will chip away at your health. Though, granted, this cloud is going to be pretty small and it would be pretty easily avoided, but it can serve as a pretty good edge guarding tool. The side special is Place Block. This move, like the bucket, would also generate one of three different blocks with different properties. The blocks in this case are dirt, stone, or wood. Dirt is weak and can break easier with attacks, stone is the strongest but is slower to place down, and wood is a nice mix between the two in terms of durability, but if caught on fire will disappear very fast. 
You can use blocks to extend platforms, build a wall, or make a tower to get some extra height. But the only downside is that you can only build with three blocks at a time. But once one breaks, a new one can be placed down. Soaring into the up special is the Elytra Boost, where Steve shoots up with the Elytra wings and then slowly glides down until going into freefall. Lastly, for Steve's special moves, the down special is the crafting table. This is a three-part move, where when on the first press, Steve places down a crafting table block. When pressing the button again next to the block, now the real magic starts. Like Hero, Steve has a selection of spells, or in this case, crafting recipes, to dish out attacks. The hotbar will be limited to five items per use, but like the command selection, you can cancel the attack at any time and try again with a new selection. But the fun thing is that the crafting table is a physical object. You have to place it down anywhere and you have to be near it to be able to actually use it. Once it gets destroyed, Steve will have to place down a new one and repeat the process over again. There are 10 craftable things total, so let's just get right into it, starting with the fireworks. The fireworks are a vertical projectile that can be comparable to Snake's up smash or Isabelle's Lloyd rocket. The next item is the golden apple, which heals around 12%, but has a longer cooldown so you have to wait a while if you just used one. Next is the iron armor, which reduces knockback and damage until the armor breaks. After that is the shovel that can dig a pitfall spot and will ground somebody when stepping into the spot, just like a pitfall steed. After that is the minecart and a dispenser. For the minecart, you can hop in and barrel through anything in your path. With the dispenser, you spew out 10 arrows until it breaks and disappears. There's also the jukebox, where when you stand next to it, you're forced into taunting. Once the taunt's over, you can go back to fighting, or whatever. There's only three things left, and all are kind of wacky, so please just bear with me for this part. First up is the end crystal, where it's basically just a glorified bomb, and it'll explode once it comes into contact with anything. And lastly, these last two things aren't even things that you can craft on the table and are things that you have to craft in the overworld. First is a snow golem where you basically make a moving snowball dispenser. Just like the golden apple, it also has a huge cooldown. Finally, you can craft the wither. Yeah, that wither. Think of the wither as a flying dispenser where they can shoot five homing skulls. Granted, they act like a mix between the Nikita and Samus missiles where they home onto opponents, but they will explode after a few seconds of not hitting anything. Crikey, that's a lot of attacks. Thank god we're done with them though, which just leaves... The final smash is the Ender Dragon Strike, where Steve rides in on the Ender Dragon like an absolute gamer. Alrighty, Connor, shall we delve into everything else aside from the moveset now? Coolio, let's start with the alternate costumes. Connor, I'm gonna let you take this one. No. Dude, come on, it's in the script. Come on, I, did, I just don't want to do it. Come on, man. No, dude, yeah, I, please, no. come on. I don't, come on, dude. Please, I don't want to do that. There's the default Steve costume, Alex, Tuxedo Steve, Zombie, Skeleton, Mojang shirt for both Alex and Steve, and the pig mask costumes. After that is the taunts. For the up taunt, he eats a cookie. The side taunt is him bringing out a book and quill to write some stuff in it, and the down taunt is him playing with his dog. Let's call him Sparky. Up after that is the stage, New World. Hey look, it's just a regular Minecraft world. And just like the wild area stage in my Rillaboom video, it is a roaming stage. It starts with the overworld, then transitions to the underground with minecarts and rails, then to the fiery nether, then to a stronghold before finally delving into the end, before cycling all the way back into the overworld. That's a pretty cool stage, but can only be great if it comes with an amazing set of songs. This set of music, because of how calm Minecraft music really is, is going to have a fair amount of remixes, including remixes of Sweden, Living Lice, Cat and Dog, Moog City 2, Alpha, and Hagstrom. The other songs that aren't remixes are going to be Living Mice, Droopy Likes Your Face, Sweden, Minecraft, Moog City 2, Alpha, and Hagstrom. Also pig step because we wrote this before the Nether update was released. So a lot of them are the normal songs as well as the remixes. Alrighty, I really want to just get to the classic mode, but these fucking spirits are in the way. So let's just get past them, alright? The novice spirit starts with Pig as a support spirit where you fight against a tiny Ganondorf who tends to avoid conflict on Mushroom Kingdom U. Lots of food spawns and rewards you with breaking ability up. The sheep is also here as a support spirit where you fight against a faster Isabel on 3D land who tends to avoid conflict as well. They reward you with shield durability up. Lastly here is Slime who is a primary defense spirit where you fight against Kirby who uses Neutra Special more often and is easily distracted on New World. You get rewarded with Insta Drop. 
The advanced spirits have the villagers as a support spirit, who are represented by villagers, who can only attack using their special attacks, and Robin, who uses attacks from their spellbook on New World. They are easily distracted and reward you with a fairy and a bottle on startup. Then there's the creeper. Aw oh, man. Ivysaur is here with a bomber on Gower Plains, who will chase after you. Naturally, you'll get a bomber on startup. Luckily, there is only one ace spirit being the pillagers, who are three dark younglings with lipstick on reset bomb forest. You are rewarded with PSI attacks up. As for the legend spirit, there are two with us today, and who could they be other than the ender dragon and the wither? The Ender Dragon is a primary defense spirit where you fight against the Ridley that uses neutral special more often on the end part of the new world. They can auto heal, have floaty jumps, and have a chance for double final smash. You're rewarded with jump boost, where it's floaty jumps plus a third jump. As for the Wither, it is a Dark Samus who uses side special and side smash more often on Spear Pillar who has unflinching smash attacks, auto heal, and starts with a jetpack. Finally, it is time to get into Steve's classic mode titled Road to the End. As per usual, 8 rounds with one of them being a bonus round, alright? Ready, go. Round 1 is against a wolf and duck hunt on New World's Overworld part. Round 2 is against 3 Grey Kirby's who uses down special a lot in New World's Overworld section. Round 3 is against a Dark Samus and 2 Ivysaurs on New World's Underground section. Round 4 is against 3 Darklings on New World's Overworld section. Round 5 is against 2 Warriors and a Ryu who uses Neutral Special on a lot of New World's Nether segment. Round 6 is against a Horde of Squirtles on New World's Stronghold section. Hey, Round 7's a bonus level. Neat. Lastly, Round 8 is a one-on-one -on -one fight against Rathalost on New World's End section. What a fitting end. Woo! We are done, Connor. Anything you want to say, my guy? Please somebody save me. I'm being held against my will and I don't know what to do or where to go. I've lost all hope of survival now. Please. Anyone. Oh, and also subscribe to my channel. Also, can I have my body back now? I can't feel my... everything. Oh, shoot. Uh, right. Here you go. I have a nose again. Thank you. Oh my gosh, thank you. Hey, I'm gonna go play some We Play. You wanna play with me? No, I'm not really in a we play mood right now. Okay, purple it's good man. I'm gonna go play now. I'm gonna see ya. Bye. <coughs> Alrighty, Toxic Crew, if you like what I do, why don't you like and subscribe? And if you want some snazzy perks, consider going over to my Patreon page. I have a lot of perks that will make your pledge worthwhile, like a little portrait on the end of my videos, weekly updates on everything I'm working on, and early access to videos like these. And with that, that's going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and keep on crack a -lackin'. Let's see that Fighter 4 reveal. Woo!